And I tell you what, it looks phenomenal from here. Check that out. Oh my God, that is incredible. Unbelievable. We are almost 10 feet tall. So we should dub this the Slam Dunk Fountain Escape. I would <laughs> I say it. it would be adequate for this. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm the Pond Professor here. I hate to say it, but unfortunately winter is upon us. <laughs> We're having some cold temps here in the Chicagoland area. So you know what that means? Snow is right around the corner. Actually, I think they had some flurries last night. A little bit of stuff, but nothing stuck. I am working with Brent and the team at the Pond Beyond right now on a really cool project. You've seen me work with them before. We did that amazing project together over in the south suburbs of Chicago. Massive, long stream waterfall system cascading down natural slope going into a natural pond. Unbelievable, unbelievable project. Huge intake bay, multiple pumps, big grade chains, hundreds of tons of boulders, a lot of grade chains from top to bottom. So that means a lot of different waterfalls, but also a lot of different elevations and things that we had to take into consideration to line everything up with some of the existing structures on the property. But today, still in the Chicagoland area, we are working on a custom fountain system. This is going to be an unbelievable project because we're going to have multiple urns. We're going to have weathered limestone. We're going to have some spillway bowls. We're going to have stack slate walls, all these different things coming together. And and not on a commercial site, this is residential. This is gonna be an awesome, awesome project, stay tuned. We have some major, major changes to make. Brent came in and he started demolishing the existing fountain system that was there. He also was gonna start moving the gas line and he had to move some irrigation lines and things like that. And as he's doing his excavation work, eight, 10 inches or so down below the top of the turf grass, he's hitting like this insulation foam. And all of a sudden it was in one spot and it was in another and it was another, he's like, oh, he's like, something's under here that's usually used for insulating purposes and protecting things underneath so he started asking around and what he found out was right where you're at you're on top of the basketball court so he's like there's a basketball court underneath the middle of the backyard and they're like yeah it goes down it's 30 feet from where you're standing all the way to the floor of the basketball court that changes literally everything he said, not only can I not go as deep with my reservoir, I can't dig down because I'm hitting concrete, but he said he's got a huge excavator coming in to do the excavation and set all these big boulders and stuff like that. And this excavator weighs, I don't even know how many tons, but it's a big excavator. And all that has to change because we don't know the load bearing capacity of this roof. Now, obviously if it's designed to be buried, but can you have an excavator driving on the roof? Can you be setting giant boulders? Can you have thousands and thousands of gallons of water sitting in a reservoir on top of this. Now, they had an existing fountain that was concrete, but it was somewhat compact. Now we're blowing this out and coming in with a huge footprint, and it's gonna be thousands of gallons of water, big boulders, everything, everything, everything is changing right now. So what we're doing is, I'm gonna jump back into our design here. This is where we left off. We were going to be digging down. Here is the existing patio. We can no longer do that because underneath, so I did another quick sketch over here. Here's that existing patio over here. There was some concrete right over here. This was supporting the original fountain that was right over in here somewhere. That was a footing for that, but we didn't realize this concrete footing was sitting on top of the concrete slab that was actually holding up the entire roof structure. Everything changes. So now, instead of digging down like we were going to do on this design over here, we are building up. We're coming in and again, there's that patio. We're gonna have to set boulders over here to build up on top of the concrete. Thankfully, we are coming in with our Aquablock system, which is a modular system. We're working with rubber membranes. We're working with our Aquablocks, which we could put together in different configurations. They come in different heights, as well as volumes. You could stack them together. It's kind of like little Lego type things. If we had a precast concrete structure, it would be impossible. Like we'd have to scrap everything, thousands and thousands of dollars lost. But now what we can do is we can start modifying things a little bit. It's gonna set us back, but it is doable. So by coming in here with boulders on top of this existing concrete slab, now we're gonna come in with small aqua blocks over here. We could still dig down a little bit, 
but like I said, we're only digging down eight or 10 inches. So this is why we have to build everything up because we still need a specific volume of water inside of this fountain to make it function. What we're doing is we're building up a little bit, digging down a little bit, and we're gonna kinda have this two-step type of a system in here that's gonna store the water. So here's that concrete structure that's actually holding up the roof of this entire basketball court. And we're gonna be coming in, sitting on top of it with a smaller excavator now. And we're gonna probably have to change up some boulder sizes and things like that to keep the weight off of the roof. Everything that we had over here on this initial one is still gonna stay the same. We're still gonna have those fountains. We're still gonna have the same height that we're going for, but now we have to shift everything up. So it is gonna cause a little bit of a hiccup, like I said. I know we're gonna be able to come up with a solution. So we're gonna have to think on the fly. We're gonna have to put all this stuff together. So this is what we're doing as I speak right now. So Continue to make progress here on the fountainscape. As you can see, we started bringing in boulders. Challenge that we're having, we have a small machine, like I said, because we're sitting on top of the roof of a basketball court, but also because of our access, we have a very tight access point coming all the way around from the outside perimeter. So we just don't have access to get in bigger equipment. So we are struggling a little bit, but Brent has handpicked some of these rocks to make sure that we're gonna be able to move them. We just added in another sphere down below just to kind of balance everything out a little bit. We have kind of a nice flow from the high kind of another big high point here kind of a series of valleys and things like that kind of coming through everything what we're trying to think of now is where we want water flow because we're gonna have all that water coming out of these fountains and now it has to enter back down into the aqua box going towards the pump vaults so we have to have channels for the water to kind of disappear and go down below. We're setting in these key boulders, creating our frame rocks for our waterfalls. And then through these little open areas, we're gonna have a series of small waterfalls and cascades. It's gonna be another small one kind of right in between here. Everything's gonna to come together on this craggy rock and just kind of roll itself down. Now, the other thing that we're doing to save on weight you can see we're building up everything on top of these aqua blocks. So one way to do it is to obviously just bring in stone. So on top of the aqua blocks, which are holding the water. So remember down here, this is holding the water storage. Everything above this is basically gonna be air. It's gonna be hollow. So we have two options for that. One, we could use aqua blocks, which are structurally sound. They could hold everything in place and they'll do a great job. But because they're hollow, these only weigh a few pounds a piece. It's not putting excess weight on the roof of the structure. Another way to do this exact same type of construction is to come in once we have these boulders set and we would fill all of this in with crushed stone or river rock that would create us a structural system and then we could start placing everything on top of it. But by doing that, we'd be adding many, many tons of additional weight to the overall roof. So we wanna to try to stay away from that. So we're just filling in void spaces with the aqua blocks and or the aqua block panels, which we could take apart and we could put them together in different configurations to get any thickness that we're really looking for. So our next step now is gonna to be to come in with a little bit of river rock over all this stuff. We're gonna set another couple big rocks in here, which is gonna be a little bit of a challenge. But right now I am liking the way everything is coming together. We do have a ton of plumbing work to do, but it's really starting to take shape. All right, Brent, tell us what you're working on. And we took the base of one of our urns here that we cut down. We made a little spillway bowl out of it. It's just a little decorative feature mm -hmm. from a piece that would normally be taken away and used as a planter or hauled off site. So we cut a bunch of slots into it evenly spaced at an inch and a half apart and three quarters of an inch deep. So we set the blade on our skill saw to be perfect. So we want this to be as uniform as possible, but make it look seamless from this waterfall all the way around. So this is gonna be remain intact because this is actually gonna create a pooling area for a waterfall in the back here. Inch and a half pipe coming up through the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. And then we added a bunch of river rock and then we did a bib with a piece of the pond liner and then there's a bulkhead in the middle. So the water will flow up through the middle of this. And then we're actually probably more than likely gonna do too is screw into this bulkhead and adapt to a little standpipe. So we'll have a little fountain that will actually come out of this as well. Yeah, that'll look great. So 
Hopefully having water running, hopefully today. This afternoon. <laughs> All right, this check afternoon. this out. As soon as you walk through the back gate, you could see the fountain is operational. And I tell you what, it looks phenomenal from here. I cannot wait to see what it looks like. I have, was not here yesterday when they got everything running. Check that out. Oh my God, that is incredible. Unbelievable. We are almost 10 feet tall at the highest urn over here water cascading around all over the place all types of little waterfalls all different action coming around from multiple angles and that's because the back of the home we have tons and tons of viewing areas so we want to take advantage of all of that stuff and i tell you what this does it tell us a little bit about what you have here because there is a lot of stuff going we on a lot going on <laughs> today we'll have the two fire features the salt columns will be hooked up okay. with gas and then we'll also hook up the large urn here this large urn will be a fire feature this is the other larger and fire feature, so that'll all be operational today. We have 33 color changing lights <laughs> installed on this that we have to get programmed. We don't have everything turned all the way up, but we're moving 470 to 500 gallons of water a minute. Wow. Of flow. So we should dub this the slam dunk fountain escape. I would <laughs> I say it. it would be adequate for this. It looks unbelievable. There's so many different angles. What I love about it is you can kind of break down all these little individual sections. I mean, this little section by itself looks incredible. These craggy natural moss boulders have all types of little nooks and crannies and crevices from water being worn over them over the years. So we just wanted to accentuate that. Again, look at all these different angles. This side, big giant waterfall down here in the bottom. This is the first section of stone that was actually installed. This little lower urn over here, the big waterfall in between. Then we got the fire one over on that side. Wow, <laughs> was that incredible or what? Brent and the incredible team over at the Pond Beyond, phenomenal job again. Always enjoy working with them. Looking forward to the next project because that's part of my role at Aquascape. I assist contractors on unique projects as well as design build our own, do lots of training, do product development and research with Dave and the team at Aquascape. So it is highly diverse and it's a lot of fun. Definitely keeps me busy. So I hope you enjoyed this incredible water feature and I look forward to seeing you all soon.